Hello everyone, welcome to DDL's pack review series. Today we are going to speak to you about some of the common questions we're getting in the industry from our customers regarding seal strength and acceptance criteria. My name is Peter Johnson and as always I have Scott Levy with me here today. Scott, when speaking with your customers, you know, how do you go about establishing seal strength criteria? I think we should start off by talking about seal strength criteria. Uh, currently, we're seeing a lot of our customers writing a one pound minimum seal strength requirement with inside their protocols. And there's a lot of customers that are failing their protocols because they're not meeting their specified acceptance criteria of one pound. So I think we should step back a little bit and try to talk a little bit about one pound, what that actually means, if that's a reality or if that's an overall myth that the industry has created uh, for organizations just to latch on to. As I've been doing this 25 years, almost every protocol that I see has a one pound minimum strength requirement. And you know, we step back, we take a look, where'd that one pound come from? And in doing quite a bit of digging, and you have as well, I think you can talk a little bit more to this, uh, but EN868 has a strength requirement in there uh, that if you go through all the calculations, it gets you pretty close to one pound. But that one pound really means from my perspective, absolutely nothing. Uh, your one pound or your minimum strength requirement should be coming directly from your process validation. And before even determining what type of strength you need, uh, you should be looking at the type of product you have that's going into a particular pouch and or tray. In your design validation, up front, looking at uh, strength levels, uh, for example, I'm just gonna use some very crude terms. Uh, am I gonna put a 10 pound bowling ball inside of a one pound minimum strength requirement? No, I'm not. It, if I'm gonna put gauze inside of a pouch, is one pound an acceptable strength? Well, sure it is. But it's left up to each medical device manufacturer on what strength level is acceptable. From my perspective, the key aspect with this is being able to have a repeatability and reproducibility of that strength level that you're claiming is your minimum strength. Yeah, as you mentioned, the, the industry is kind of, that one pound minimum has kind of manifested itself into the industry norm. And to your point, one pound may not be good enough for your particular application. Should you be calling out any specifications for your seal strength testing? I think so. I think that in most protocols, you should have an acceptance criteria just to fully understand where you're at. Again, the key is about reproducibility and repeatability, right? Right. And in a package validation, you want to ensure that you have high confidence that the strength levels that you're producing after aging, after distribution, after real time, are either equal or better than what you're stating is your minimum strength requirement. I think it's pretty important. I also feel that if you know, a lot of organizations are getting their minimum strength uh, and doing their testing pre-sterilization, okay? From my perspective, you should be taking a look at that strength level pre and post sterilization to understand if sterilization is going to cause any adverse effects to that minimum acceptable strength. And I think a lot of people lose track of doing that. You know, one very quick and easy way to do this, and I know most organizations don't have time to step back and, uh, for example, do extra testing up front because everybody is speed to market, speed to market, we need to hit a specific date. But if I was stepping back and I was doing this and I picked 1.3, 1.25 strength, I'd want to know pre-sterilization, I'd want to know post-sterilization if that's being affected, and I'd also want to understand if that's going to be affected after transportation simulation testing. So I, we talked in PAC review uh, about transportation simulation testing and how most organizations should be doing a feasibility test to ensure that the sterility maintenance isn't going to be compromised that is a great place to understand if their minimum strength requirements are going to be affected by distribution as well. Scott, do you see anything new coming up on the horizons? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, the biggest single difference that most medical, de medical device manufacturers are going to have to deal with uh, per ISO 11607, the new revision, is what's called usability. And in your design validation, you're going to need to go out and speak with whether it's a scrub nurse, OR nurse, uh, home user, etc., to understand the overall usability of a package. Uh, at that point, you know, understanding the strength levels, 
uh, for a specific nurse to open up that package is going to be pretty important information. But usability for packaging engineers versus usability for products, uh, usability for products has been around for years. Uh, overall human factors on a product. Uh, now with 11607 being updated, uh, packaging engineers are also going to need to deal with the usability of packaging materials as well. Ease of opening, ease of aseptic transfer, etc. So that's something that's new that's coming down the line that uh, most people are not going to be too familiar with. Scott, do you have customers that uh, get steel strength values that are below a pound? Absolutely. I've got a couple customers that their minimum acceptable seal strength is 0.65. Is that wrong? No, it's not. The key again is to pick a strength level that you're comfortable with that you can reproduce, right? Uh, as long as the integrity is maintained. And at that 0.65 minimum, and their integrity passes, is that considered a good sterile barrier? Yes, it is. Most people lose sight of that because of how low that strength level is. Again, if I'm packaging gauze, is 0.65 enough? The integrity is being met, my answer would be yes, that's more than acceptable. Sounds great, Scott. Thank you everyone for joining us today. As always, if you have any further questions, uh, please visit our website at www.testingimprovement.com.